basically I'm I was sad. I felt like I felt like I was a fraud. Um why would my followers or my subscribers still support me? You know? Say cheese. <laughs> Go back to mommy. Go back to mommy. Come, come. Okay? Stay right here. Stay next to cheese. mommy. Okay? Uh -huh. You gotta say cheese, okay? One, One two, two. Three. look at me. Look at me, baby. Cheese. cheese. cheese you don't have to you don't have to bend down like that, babe. <laughs> you don't have to bend down like that. Oh my god. Hey y'all, it's Melissa and I'm back with another video. Um, this one I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. Um, I didn't know what the world would think of this as, but I feel like it's something that's um, kind of normal. Um, I'm going to talk about basically why I hid my pregnancy from YouTube, <laughs> um, from Instagram, from social media, basically, but specifically YouTube. Um, if you don't know anything about me, my name is Melissa. I am a mom of three. Um, I have twin um, daughters who I conceived via IVF, and I have a 11-month-old son who I conceived naturally with my husband. I'm a full-time mom. I work. I am an entrepreneur. Shop Minerals Apparel um, coming soon. And um, yeah, that's, that's my life. I'm a sister. I'm a mom. I'm a friend. I'm a lot of things. Um, so if you're familiar with my story, Confessions of an Aspiring Mom is one of my IG pages. This YouTube page has kind of went from a trying to conceive IVF pregnancy to now motherhood. So that's why the name has um, changed to Confessions of a Mom, um, the Baruch's crew, because that is my crew, that's my fam. Um, so basically we, we, I went from trying to conceive to becoming a mother and I pretty much documented that on my YouTube channel and my Instagram page. Um, I had the girls in 2018 and uh, August 2018 and by January 2020. So my son is a pre-pandemic baby. <laughs> but uh, by January 2021, we had conceived, but I didn't know. And then by February, um, I found out I was pregnant. And I did not expect that. I have PCOS. Um, my cycles were regular after having the girls, but not with not before that. They were just all over the place. So I went from IUI to IVF. Before IUI, time intercourse, like... We did all the spiel, fertility clinics, OBGYNs. I have all of that information um, in my previous videos. Um, you can see my whole entire journey of what I went through to have my girls. So fast forward to January, February, 2020. My period was late, but I figured, you know what? It's late because my PCOS is acting up again. Um, pretty much from 2019 to 2020 that whole year my period was like clockwork literally every four weeks same time same day if it changed maybe a day or two but generally it was every 28 to 30 days which was very very um new to me and rare like it was I was always a oh my god it's a surprise I was never prepared I never had the pads I never had the tampons it was always a oh crap my period came because I've gone so long with it being irregular so the girl's godmother, well, all three of them now, godmother, basically kept telling me, hey, you should take a test. And I'm just like, for what? <laughs> like, why would I play myself? I've had enough BFNs, um, big fat negatives in my life to not even bother. And she just kept saying anything, saying that. So I got off at work, I got off at nine, and I'm flying down the highway, get off the highway, and before I even... Um, make it home. I'm like, oh, let me just pass by this Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is closed. I'm like, you know what? It's a sign. It's a sign. Um, then I'm like, okay, Melissa, you're gonna regret this. Just, just go to the Walmart, which is right there. I go to the Walmart. It literally had maybe like two tests, 
one of them looked kind of busted, but I was like, oh, it's just a packaging, it'll be fine, it's gonna be negative anyway. Grab the test, go home. Um, didn't even tell my husband or anything like that. I just grabbed the test, go home or whatever. Then um, the next morning, I wake up, hubby's already gone. Um, me and Anna are in the restroom, and I'm just like, oh shoot, let me go get a test. So at this time, we're living with uh, my mother-in-law. We decided to stop renting, pay down debt. Um, we had sold our SUV, we sold our Dodge Durango, which I love. I freaking miss that. I miss that car. We sold it because we're like, it's we're a family of four. This is it. We had already requested the forms from our fertility clinic so that we could donate our embryos to science for research. And I knew it was in the mail because I have like that USPS delivery thing where it kind of tells you the day of like, hey, this is what's coming in your mail today. So I saw that pop up that morning, it was in February of 2020. So we had those forms in the mail. I just needed to go get them and, you know, get them signed, get a notary. Car was sold. We had just bought a, I went from an SUV to a, Hyundai Genesis, which was like my dream car. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy with this car. Like I, we were set, we were on our way towards home ownership. We were paying off debt. We were trying to, you know, we we're basically trying to do it the Dave Ramsey way. Um, you know, I was one foot in, one foot out. Um, and so I, that morning I took the test. Uh, I, I snuck off cause I didn't, I didn't want my mother-in-law who was still sleeping to like see or anything like that. So I snuck off, you know, tried to tiptoe around the kitchen, grab the, um, grab the, um, plastic cup, took the test and, you know, walked away, came back and I'm like, I think I have it recorded somewhere. If I have the clip, I'll try to insert it. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh, Anna, you're going to be a big sister. <laughs> Bella was still asleep at the time. She was still in her bed, still sleeping in the bed. And I just, I couldn't believe that I saw it. Like, it was a, like, it was a clear positive. There was no, oh my God, let me zoom in, let me put it under, you know, put it under the light and all this other stuff. Like, it was a legit positive test. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I, I want to say I sent the picture to um their godmother and then i knew my husband wasn't gonna s get a text like he he's a driver a delivery driver so at the time he still is but off and on um so at the time i was like okay i'm gonna just call him and i called him and i was like i'm pregnant <laughs> and he was like he was in complete he's like i have to pull over i have to pull over <laughs> Uh, and, he, and I'm just like, yo, I'm pregnant. And I couldn't believe, like, I could not believe it. Like, it was shock. It was, like, I never, ever, ever thought that, number one, that we could get pregnant without any sort of fertility treatment. Because I did an IUI. I did several IUIs. I got pregnant on my second one and this carried, unfortunately, several weeks later, right before um, Christmas of 20, I want to say 26. 17 either 16 or 17 god it's been a minute um so i never thought i would get pregnant on my own nor did i ever think i would be able to have that experience of like just randomly taking a test and getting a positive result and like i never thought that was going to be me like i saw it on tv i saw it in movies friends could tell me about it and i didn't think that would be me so fast forward like several weeks into it i'm like oh my gosh like what about my YouTube channel? Like, what what about social media? Like, what am I gonna tell you guys? Um, I got pregnant on my own. Like, oh, great, good for me. But what about the five hundred or six hundred or whoever so subscribers or followers or whoever that I had that I was trying to advocate for that I was trying to lift up? Like, you know, I I felt it was like I had survivor's guilt basically like look what happened to me 
And I remember watching, there's so many YouTube channels that I used to follow. I don't really follow them as much. Like, um, but there's so many couples that I, I followed that it was crazy how weeks before and months before leading up to me finding out I was pregnant, they were all, all trying to conceive and they had all done it via IVF, IUI, fertility treatments. And then all of a sudden they popped up sporadically pregnant on their own without trying. And I told myself, oh, that could never be me. Like, after these twins, mm -mm, that's it. We're done. Like, there's there's no way. I, and little did I know. <laughs> little did I know what was going to happen for me. Like, I, I just could not picture that. So, you know, I, I felt that survivor's guilt. And then I think the ideas that we had. We sacrificed having that independent living on our own to be able to get rid of some debt and then to be able to purchase a home. Like we had all these dreams and goals and desires of how to be starting his own business. And like all these things were, were why we moved in with my mother-in-law. And all that was going to go, to me at the time felt like I was about, it was going down the drain because now I had a whole nother human to take care of. And if you aren't familiar with my pregnancy journey with the twins, like I was extremely high risk. I had a short cervix. Um, I had to go on bed rest at 20 weeks, then hospital bed rest at 22 or 23 weeks. Like it was a lot. They were premature. They were born early. There was NICU. Like it was all of that. And it was like, oh my gosh, I'm really about to go through this again. And so... I felt sad. I felt sad. I felt like a fraud. Um, it was like, were they going to support me? You know, what, like not my family and friends, but like my, my, my following you guys, like were you guys going to support me on this journey? Because I was able to get pregnant on my own, you know, like, and that's what, and it's crazy because it's like, that's what we want. That's our ultimate goal, you know, in the infertility community. But it was like, dang, like she did it, but I couldn't do it. Like, that's how I felt. And I think that mixed up with, you know, the goals that we had talked about, that we set, the things we had sacrificed to get to where we were, that together, I don't know if I was depressed because I don't like to use that word lightly right but i know it was a a a very very much a period of time of a lot of sadness um my my first trimester it was a lot of that and then coupled up with like just not like constant nausea like that bubble guts feeling like oh like I, nothing sat well with this child like my son was that whole pregnancy was <laughs> that whole pregnancy was messiah was was rough rough and um let me know if the comment in the comments if you guys want me to do it, a video like about my singleton pregnancy versus a twin pregnancy what what that experience was like um because it was definitely like there were similarities here and there but like it was vastly different like high risk for different reasons um so i felt that i felt that but I think now, you know, fast forward a year and some change later, I realized that like, this is what we ultimately want. And I'm grateful for whatever, however this happened, that IVF some, somehow reset my body to be able to conceive on its own, which is like, wow. Um, I, I couldn't have, it's, the, the girls are a blessing in themselves. Um, again, because it was, with them, it was one it was a one embryo transfer, and they split <laughs> to identical twins. So that was definitely a, a um, miracle in itself for them. For us, as a family, uh, we went into it with one, came out with two. I actually bought a crib on sale a month before my IVF cycle, and... 
because I was just like, I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to, I'm going to manifest it. So I'm going to buy this crib. And, I, and I'll never forget when we found out at five weeks or six weeks. And I, well, we, we, the, the, the fertility clinic suspected it in the first, um, ultrasound I ran downstairs to tell my husband at the time I think we're gonna need a second crib I think we're gonna have to call your sister and tell her we need a second crib <laughs> um but I realized now again like just bringing it all back that it was a it, it was a blessing all three of my children are blessings in different ways um and for me I'm an infertility warrior but at the same time I'm a success story um and it's important to share these success stories so that way there's hope. You can see the other side. There is a, a light. There is gold at the end of the rainbow. It's just, you know, we all have to go through it in different ways. And I'm, I'm grateful that I have had this experience to be able to go through the infertility journey and tough it out and be like, why me, why me, why me? To then be able to conceive naturally. And, and, I, and now I have both sides. And now I have both sides and I'm able to tell everyone, you know, how it all went down. So, um, so that's, that's, that's why it was tough for me to speak on this. Uh, a year ago but now I'm like you know when people ask me about it and hey what happened like did you do IVF I thought you said you would never do it again and it was so hard and now I'm like no I didn't let me tell you what let me tell you what God did for me um and and now I'm I'm a, I've always been but I it's more so I'm, I'm a walking talking testimony of of the of what, of what God can do for you. Absolutely. So um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can always send me a, a comment below. And I, I always reply. I may not reply right that second. Because <laughs> I'm doing a million things at once. But I always, always reply to my comments. You can follow me on Instagram at the Baruse Crew. And also Instagram again for Shop Melrose Apparel for this Melanated Mama shirt will be available. Um, as well as other, you know, home decor, mugs and shirts, things that are all related to um, mommies, mommies to bees, infer my infertility warriors, um, my everyday moms, this everything related to women, comfortable clothing that's all about you, about us about that on the go get up and go mom who got things to do places to go who's booked and busy um you can get at me on tiktok as well at shop melrose apparel facebook shop melrose apparel um tiktok the Baruse crew as well so we i'm i'm on all of these platforms so Coming soon, I'll make sure to put the description and the bio for all my information for my website information. Um, launching in the next couple of weeks. So I look forward to that. I hope you guys come back soon. Let me know what other videos you guys want me to post. I know it's been a minute. <laughs> but I have my videos. I have my vision board. I have everything lined up for you guys. So stay tuned. Bye. <laughs>